Hey y'all, Texas Taterbug here. So I thought I would try my hand at making a video about how to make a free or nearly free uh, guard for your Dremel tool. Um, what I've done here is I've found a bottle, it's actually from a container of Boost, uh, and it has this little bell-shaped top, which I think is going to work perfectly for a guard, so I thought I'd go ahead and make a, a new guard for my Dremel. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the, the outer housing, um, and that way you can get a, a measure of what this uh, inner sleeve diameter is, and it looks like a three-quarter uh, spade bit is going to work perfectly for this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set up here uh, to be able to cut a three-quarter inch hole in the center of our cap for the bottle. And I'm just using a uh, F-type pipe wrench to hold things in place over uh, something I can drill down onto. My wife would probably not be pleased if I drilled through that uh, tube before since the, what's underneath there is her nice table. Um, I don't have a workshop per se, so most of the stuff I just do uh, set up after I get done uh, cleaning up after whatever my kids have gotten into throughout the day. We're going to put this three quarter inch hole right through the center of our cap, and once we get that uh, taken off, then we'll be able to place the cap onto the Dremel and cinch it down um, with our uh, with the sleeve. Now the way this works essentially is the bottle cap is going to hold a portion of the bottle in place and that portion of the bottle is going to be the guard. So this allows you to shape a guard however, um, however you might want to. And I've seen you know, other videos on YouTube where people have used uh, pill bottles and um, some other things. I think that you know, the you know, pill bottle or something that has, has a cloudy uh, or you know, a colored um, uh, plastic it makes it a little bit more difficult to use as a guard because you can't see your work piece uh, as easily. Uh, whereas this um, ultra clear piece of uh, PET plastic is going to make a really good guard. And like I say, that bell shape is going to be able to um, protect your work area but also allow for kind of containing sparks and, and pushing them away from you and that sort of thing if you happen to be uh, cutting or grinding metal. Which is something that I've been getting into a little bit lately. Uh, with this Dremel as I start to build a uh, convertible um, aluminum smelting furnace that will also function as a propane powered uh, blacksmithing forge. So you can see here I'm just uh, cinching down a, uh, a cutting bit. Um, not a bit, that's not a bit, that's a reinforced cutting wheel. Anyway, so once I get this uh, reinforced cutting wheel cinched down, I'm actually going to use the Dremel uh, to make uh, the cuts into this guard um, in a shape that I think is going to be a good shape. And obviously, uh, you, can, you can take more material off, but you can't add material. So when you're, when you're cutting out the shape of your guard, you may want to start with it a little bigger than, uh, than you might ultimately desire, and you can always trim off a little bit more. But um, you know, not, not that uh, <laughs> what this came from is expensive since I just uh, picked, plucked this up out of our recycling bin, but um, if you don't want to waste materials, then you want to you make the guard as big as you think you might use, and then you can always cut it down uh, smaller if it turns out to be a little bit too large. And actually this one I found uh, worked very well with this cutting wheel when I used this type of cutting wheel on things like plastic and wood. Um, with uh, metallic substances when you're cutting sheet metal with, uh, uh, with this cutting wheel, what you'll find is that it works its way down to being very small pretty quickly if you're cutting through metal with it. Um, and I found as the cutting wheel got smaller and smaller as I, as I used up the surface of the wheel, um, the guard started to get in the way and so I, I ended up uh, eventually having to remove the guard uh, in order to make some of the cuts that I made for uh, the furnace build, and I'm um, hoping that I can get some of that video out to you guys pretty soon. I, I was filming outside um, over this last weekend, and uh, in sub-freezing temperatures, my camera batteries weren't performing very well, and I kept having uh, to switch cameras, and so hopefully I've got some usable footage. I haven't had a chance to go through all that yet. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, I've got the guard cut now, so we're just going to remove that, uh, that cutting wheel so that we can uh, slide the guard down in place. 
And once we have the guard down in place uh, by uh, cinching it up to the bottle cap, um, then you can add a bit. Actually, um, I prefer to, uh, rather than having to use the um, collet that requires a wrench, I prefer using the wrenchless chuck anyway. And once you have this guard in place, as you notice, you cannot get the wrench down onto the collet. So if you do not have, um, if you do not have this uh, uh, $8-ish, I think, um, keyless uh, chuck, that I'm cinching down onto the Dremel, I would recommend uh, getting a hold of one of those. It's probably the, it, it, you know, most people consider it to be one of the best Dremel attachments you can possibly have for your rotary tool. It certainly makes changing out bits a lot easier. And if you're working on a project where you're gonna be uh, moving between different bits, uh, it's a good thing to have. Uh, so now you can see I've got the guard in place. I can turn on the Dremel, I can use it, uh, and you can see how I'm having to angle my workpiece uh, a little bit in order to be able to work with uh, uh, work around the bottle cap, um, but uh, the guard is certainly doing the job of uh, protecting me from any debris that might be flying off of the workpiece. So hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you for the next video.